It's all the comic books I own. It's my day off, so come, let's take a tour. Hey guys, my name is Jen. Today I'm going to show you all the comic books I have. My brother and I grew up reading comics in the Philippines, specifically funny comics. Buying one was a tradition every weekend, and I guess that's my history with the media. I stopped reading towards the end of high school. I am a book reader. Check out my bookshelf tour, by the way. But one time I suffered from a terrible reading slump. I just got so bored and impatient with novels. My attention shifted back to comics. So here they are. This is a pretty slim collection because I also collect comics in digital form. All I have are in this form called trade paperback or TPB. I don't buy single issues or what they call floppies because they don't have spines and I would have to store them in boxes where I can't see them all the time anymore. They're gonna be hidden and maybe forgotten. I wanna see my collection all lined up pretty on a shelf. Also, I don't like hardcovers and omnibus and absolutes. They're heavy, they're thick, and it just doesn't have that appeal to me. That nostalgic appeal that reminds me of flipping through a bendy single issue as a kid. Trade paperbacks are definitely my jam. I have a few omnibuses or omnibi or omnibi, whatever you call it. But these particular ones closely resemble paperbacks or trade paperbacks. It doesn't bother me. All right, my collection is in alphabetical order by characters or series. The last one being Star Wars because that's the majority of my collection at the moment. Let's start. The 100 Bullets series, volumes 1 and 2. So imagine this. A mysterious person gives you an attache case of an untraceable gun and 100 untraceable bullets that you can use to exact revenge. It's a morality tale and I find it interesting. Batman Year One, first published in 1986? Yes, 1986. Written by Frank Miller. It's a popular opinion that this is the most essential Batman origin story. That it's good to start reading Batman with this one. Batman the Killing Joke, published in 1995, written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Brian Boland, two great artists. This is the most iconic Batman Joker story I have ever read. So the premise of the story is this, right? All it takes is one bad day to reduce the sanest man alive to lunacy. If you're a Batman fan, you should have read this years ago. It's grim, violent, the artwork is so intense that sometimes it's difficult to look at, but the facial expressions, the body language, the art is amazing. Batman The Dark Knight Returns, first published in 1986, also by Frank Miller. That guy, seriously, he's a genius. Another important read, this one. Batman's darkness of today can be traced back to this book. Before this was written, back in the 60s, Batman was, well, happy. He was campy. Now, the Batman we know is brooding, haunted, and serious. Miller's grim take redefined the character for all time. DC Universe Rebirth, a one-shot book where DC is kind of rebooting their universe. I'm not a long-time reader of Marvel and DC comics, so when I started reading comics again, I needed a point where to start. This walked me through what's happening to the DC universe moving forward. It didn't matter that I haven't read any DC comics before this. It's written by Jeff Johns, very talented writer. You'll go through an emotional roller coaster reading this, and it's pretty good. Doctor Strange, The Oath, written by Brian K. Vaughan or BKV. Fantastic comic book writer. He also wrote Saga, which you'll hear a lot in the comic book world. Doctor Strange is my favorite Marvel character because he's a mage, a sorcerer. Magic is fascinating. The Night Nurse appears in this story arc. I'm a nurse, so I naturally like the character. There's a theme of medicine versus magic in this book. It's a solid tale. Flashpoint. A time travel story, I guess, written by Jeff Johns. This is the series that started The New 52. The New 52 is DC's relaunch in 2011. They reset their entire universe. Yeah. 
these publishers, they like rebooting. But I've already decided that I'm only going to read Rebirth, not the new 52, because I don't want to be overwhelmed by hundreds of misaligned stories. I'm going to keep my life simple. So if you're like me, starting DC at Rebirth, this is the Flash series you're going to be interested in. The Flash Rebirth, Volume 1, Lightning Strikes Twice. Green Arrow Rebirth Volume 1, The Death and Life of Oliver Queen. It's very promising. I might pick up the next volume. The Infinity Gauntlet, first published in 1991, written by Jim Starlin. This is the source material for the movies Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Good read. Lara Croft and the Frozen Omen. I find it entertaining. Sherlock Holmes, The Vanishing Man. And The Trial of Sherlock Holmes published by Dynamite. These are not adaptations of books written by Arthur Conan Doyle. It's a completely new story written by Leia Moore and John Repion based on the legend. But if you've read the novels by Arthur Conan Doyle, you'll find this book that it doesn't have the depth that the novel has. But then again, it's a comic book and it wraps up in a hundred pages, more or less. It's an enjoyable read, clever story, the detective element is there. I intend to collect the other books. Thor Ragnarok's, a bit of a chunky volume here because it's a collection of three story arcs. I picked it up because it looped Norse mythology into the stories. The thing that I like about Thor is he's a mythological god and this book just presents him as such to me. Thor Volume 1, The Goddess of Thunder and Volume 2, Who Holds the Hammer? Thor lost his worthiness to use Mjolnir. Mia Mia? What's Mia Mia? And someone else came and picked it up easily. The new god of thunder. Actually, goddess. The fourth Thor movie will come out next year, 2021. Or maybe 2022 if it's delayed. I think it's delayed. It's called Thor Love and Thunder. And these comic books are a good start to get to know the new user of the hammer. Watchmen, first published in 1987. I can understand why many people swear by it. The story is very good, written by one of the greatest comic book writers of all time, Alan Moore, who wrote this too, remember? It's quite chunky compared to an average trade paperback, so I reckon you have to read this on a lazy Saturday afternoon or a quiet winter Saturday evening when you can stay up late to allow you to get into it without rushing or without long interruptions because, I don't know, I found the first half of the book too slow, but I'm glad I pushed through because it's phenomenal. Intricate plot, it presents a clever analysis of the superhero genre with its strong but flawed characters who make you think with them the justifications you give for your actions. It makes you think of your own morality. Watchmen appeals to your intelligence. The Witcher. There's the books, the video game, the TV series, and there's the comics. This is a collection of, I think, four stories. Three of the stories were original and written by Paul Tobin, not by Andrei Savkovsky, who created the Witcher series. Then one story is an adaptation of some chapters in Season of Storms, a book by Savkovsky. I purchased this together with the novels and short story collections after watching the Netflix show because I wanted to know more. So I bought this and it didn't disappoint. It gave me more stories in Geralt's universe. I hope, I really hope volume two is in the works because I'm grabbing that. Wonder Woman, Gods and Mortals, released in 1987, written by George Perez. So I like Wonder Woman and I like the Greek mythology. This combines the two. The artwork is typical 80s. It's got lots of strong female characters political intrigues, and action. I highly recommend this. It's a great origin story if you're a new fan of Wonder Woman. Witches Volume 1, a horror comics by Scott Snyder. I find it creepy more than scary, though. Why the Last Man Volume 1, Unmanned, and Volume 2, Cycles, written by BKV. All men are gone except for one. It's an interesting read, but I haven't decided yet if I'm going to continue reading the series. Okay, the rest is Star Wars. I'm a big fan of the Star Wars lore and I'm just grateful for its novels and comic books for existing because I just can't get enough of it. 
This is set up in chronological order. Here's my entire collection of the series called Tales of the Jedi, back when Dark Horse had the publishing rights to Star Wars. Now it's owned by Marvel. The events happened 5,000 years BBY, meaning before the Battle of Yavin, meaning Episode 4, A New Hope. It's thousands of years before the time of Darth Vader. Yep, everyone loves the Jedi, I do too, but what about the Sith? What do we know about them aside from being users of the dark side of the Force? This series is the tale of ancient Sith. It's the history of the Sith Empire. We have the Golden Age of the Sith, the fall of the Sith Empire. This one is called The Collection, and it collects Yuli Keldrama and the Beast Wars of Onderon, the Saga of Nomi Sunrider, and the Freedom Nod Uprising. Dark Lords of the Sith, the Sith War, and lastly, Redemption. Overall, the series is engaging because of the amazing story, but the writing style is not that great. I find that the characters are underdeveloped, but I consider this as like I would a history book. That's all it is, maybe. Next, Jedi Council Acts of War. Here we get to see some iconic Jedi in action. Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Okay, I'm gonna say something controversial. The prequel trilogy is a great trilogy. Better than the sequel trilogy in aspects which are important to me. With all its faults, the story is more coherent than the sequels. And I enjoyed it. Don't shoot me, please. Let's exist and coexist. The Hunt for Our Sing. Obi-Wan and Anakin. I think this is done well. Anakin's fall to the dark side is my greatest comic heartache. So seeing him as a Padawan with already conflicting emotions, I just want to pull him out of the story, pop his bubble, and hug him tightly, and freaking tell him to stop hanging out with Sheev. Also, lots of steampunk stuff in here. Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Age of Republic, Heroes. Padme Naberi Amidala is one of my favorite fictional characters, so I appreciate this a lot because she got her own tale in this month. Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Goodbye, Annie. Hello, Vady. The series Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, which started in 2017, written by Charles Soule, and it takes place immediately after Episode 3. Volume 1, Imperial Machine, and Volume 2, Legacy's End. Here we find out how Vader got his red lightsaber and how he adjusted to his new cybernetically enhanced body. I think I'm going to pick up the rest of the volumes. Then there's this other series also called Darth Vader, which started in 2015, written by Kieran Gillen, and it takes place between episodes 4 and 5. Volume 1, Vader. Volume 2, Shadows and Secrets. And Volume 3, The Shooterun War. So the Death Star was blown to pieces, right? Here, the Emperor is now doubting Vader's competence and he's keeping secrets from him. But hey, I don't think Vader can be so easily cast aside like that. So he sets out to flex some serious muscle. Also, Vader's on a mission to find out the name of that pilot who he felt was strong in the Force the one who blew up the Death Star. Do you know who that is? This is a great run. I'm going to pick up some more. Okay, there's this series simply called Star Wars, which started in 2015, written by Jason Aaron, and I think eventually picked up by Gillen. And it takes place also after Episode 4. Volume 1, Skywalker Strikes. Volume 2, Showdown on the Smuggler's Moon. Volume 3, Rebel Jail. And Big Jump, Volume 7, The Ashes of Jeddah. This is a used copy, but it looks like new. And it's only 8 bucks, so I grabbed it. This series follows Luke, Leia, Han, and the rest of the gang as they continue to ruin the Empire's operations. Perfect bridge to Episode 5. Vader Down, the crossover where this series meets this series. It's a face-off between Darth Vader and the Rebel fleet. Very fun to read. Next, we have Dr. Afra Volume 1, Afra, also by Gillen, great writer. 
Dr. Afra is this shady space archaeologist who used to work for Darth Vader. I love this run. New characters, which are not from the movies. The droids are so funny. Check it out. The next volume is on my purchase list. Screaming Citadel, the crossover where this series meets this series. Luke Skywalker and Dr. Afra team up in a kind of a horror story. It's not that epic, but still a good Star Wars tale. And lastly, Shattered Empire, written by Greg Rucka, and it takes place after Episode 6. You'll find out why C-3PO has a red arm in Episode 7, The Force Awakens. It's not really an important fact to know, but there it is. Poe Dameron's parents are here. There's a Force-sensitive tree that existed. It's not an essential read, but it's okay. So there you are, my comic book shelf. I'd love to know what you think of it. Please write it in the comments. Also, I welcome recommendations. I want to know your favorite story arcs and comic runs. I'm pretty new at collecting, so I'd love to hear some tips at collecting too. And if a comic book piqued your interest and you'd like me to review it, let me know. I might do that if there are two or three people who ask. Thanks for visiting my channel. I hope you enjoyed it.